Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hallelujah. Ready to worship the Lord this morning? Yes. Y'all had a blessed week? Yes. Hallelujah. We're here today. We might have had some challenges, but God took us through them, and we are here now to worship Him. So, Father, we just come before you, Lord, with hearts wide open, attitudes of just appreciation and thanksgiving for how good you are. We thank you, Lord God, for your, your mercy over our lives, over our families. We thank you, Lord God, for the hope that we have in you, that no matter what's going on in our world and around us, we can have peace because we put our trust in you. And Father, we lift up those who need a special touch from you, those who might be watching us from home who can't be here with us in person. And if anybody here or at home just need a special touch from the Lord, just lift your hand to the Lord in faith. And allow him to touch you, heal you. Lord, we lift up Doug, Josh Mizrahi, both part of our team in the back that are normally here with us, but they're not feeling well. So we just pray, God, for your healing touch upon them right now. We just thank you for removing all sickness and disease from their bodies. And Lord, we do just usher in the Holy Spirit into this place. Holy Spirit, have your way. We continue to lift up our president and all those in authority over our nation. We pray that they walk in your wisdom and they would humble themselves before you. We pray for Israel. We pray for the peace of Israel, peace of Jerusalem. We also pray for those who are in the mission field. Pam and Lori in Israel right now and we just thank you for that team, Lord God, that's there. We just pray, God, your grace over them and bring them back home safely. Karen Oliver as well, Lord. We just thank you for that, Lord. And we just and also Kalisa, who comes back tomorrow from Rwanda, just let his final day there in Rwanda just be blessed. And we just give you all glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and just go right into... Um, you know what? It's, a first, it's the first of the month. So first of all, before we go into the announcements, let's acknowledge anybody's birthdays. Do we have any birthdays in the month of April? Anybody? All right. Birthday boys. All right. Right next to each other. All three. Happy, happy birthday to you guys. And how about any anniversaries this month? Here. All right. Here. Boom. There we go. Ron and Taylor's anniversary. And if you're watching us online, it's your anniversary or birthday. Just make it known so we can th th uh, say happy birthday, happy anniversary to you as well. Amen. So let's go right into the announcement videos followed by worship. Good morning, Praise Tabernacle. We are people restored and inspired serving everywhere. Here's what's coming up this week. Friday night is movie night here at Praise Tabernacle, and we are showing season four of The Chosen. This Friday, April 12th, we are showing episodes five through six. And this is a great opportunity to spend time with friends and family. And showing starts at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. Our website and app now has a daily dose of Praise Daily Devotions to help study in your devotion time that goes along with our teaching throughout the series. It is a great way to stay fresh in the Word daily. It is also a great tool for discipleship with your family and friends. Altar ministry meeting will be today after second service in the multi-purpose room. For more information, see Elder Lee Boren. Praise Bowling is Saturday, April 20th at 1 p.m. at Kingpen. You can sign up on our Praise app or website, and this is a great way to have family time and raise funds for our care ministry. Everyone is encouraged to sign up and attend. For more information, see Harry Warren for details. Ministry Fair 2024 will be Sunday, April 21st after our second service. This is the time for you, our members, to see different ministries we offer for everyone in your family to get involved in the service of your calling. Ladies of Praise 4th Annual Spring Tea will be Saturday, May 4th. Registration and tickets for the tea can be done today on our Praise app or website. Here's a quick clip from our Ladies of Praise. Hello, ladies. We would all like to welcome you to this year's Ladies of Praise Spring Tea. So save the date for May 4th at 11 a.m. 
And our speaker this year is none other than my beautiful mother-in-law, Eldest Dolores Doty Roberts. So you cannot miss. Yes. Our tickets are, how much of our, our tickets? I, they're $10. $10. $10 tickets for ages 10 and up. So be sure to register at our Praise app. If you haven't and need some assistance for registration, please see one of us and we'll be glad to help you. We're going to be what getting all dressed up. Well, we've got to be nice and cute, okay. ladies. We've got to wear our hats, and there will be a contest. Oh, so wow. make sure you stay tuned. I love your hat. That yes. looks <laughs> so cute. Don't forget, Ladies Retreat is also this October 18th through 20th. More details to come. We're tonight with Dana Isles, and Face Down will be Friday, June 7th at 7 p.m. here at Praise Tabernacle. Remember, tithes and offerings should be given cheerfully because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We have offering boxes at both main entrances of the church. Online giving options are available on our website, praisetabernacle.church/give, and also on our Praise app. You can find us on our social media pages, and we ask that you subscribe and help us spread the word by liking and sharing our content. We are now broadcasting our 10.30 a.m. Sunday service live and podcasting on the internet radio at WeGospelRadio at Live365.com and a Caribbean Christian music radio station. Pre-recorded sermons and services will be replayed at 10.30 a.m. and 5 o'clock p.m. Monday through Saturday on We Gospel Radio and at Caribbean Christian Music. If you want to connect further with your church family, grow your understanding of the word, and impact your community, join the Kingdom Expansion Group or Key Group on our Praise app. There are also many other praise groups where you can find a place to serve and grow. As a reminder, if you have planted a seed of gospel in someone this week, come light a smaller candle in the basket at the altar. And if you have led someone to the Lord, light a bigger candle as we celebrate the expansion of God's kingdom. Now let us draw near to the Lord as we worship Him and prepare our hearts for today's sermon by Pastor Dr. Joshua Kennedy entitled, From Desolation to Redemption, from the Lamentations 1 in the Love Return series. Have a blessed rest of your day and a blessed week also. Now let us worship the Lord. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad And I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful through generations so why would he feel now he won't he won't he won't he won't i've still and i've still got joy in So I won't be going on 
someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection can never end in. Give what you don't deserve, and you take the broken things and raise them to glory. Jesus has given me. Away. 
Shit.
night and day living since her eyes. Day and night, night and day living since her eyes. Day and night, night and day living since her eyes. Just worship the Lord. Let's praise Him if He's worthy. He is worthy. So we lift Him up. We worship Him. We thank Him for how good He is. We thank our Praise City worship team doing such an excellent job. We're going to close out with Champion after the message today. Champion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have our hearts been prepared for worship, for communion through worship? Yes, it has. If you have your Bibles, actually before we do that, we're going to pass out the elements and then we'll go into the Word. So those who have been asked to pass out the elements, please come forward now. As they take their place, you can... Feel free to come forward, grab your elements, bring them back to your seats, and then we'll take communion together.
Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We just thank you, Jesus, for your blood. And we just now partake together. Praise the Lord. Good morning and uh, welcome to a brand new month and next part of our series. But before we get there, I just want to acknowledge anybody here for the first time on a Sunday morning. We have um, information about our church for you and a gift. Just need your hand raised. So if this is your first time on a Sunday morning here at Praise Tabernacle, just raise your hand right now. Touching Anybody hearts and minds time? around the world with right the here. power praise of God's word. Welcome God to Praise you. Tabernacle, the five-fold apostolic center, because we are people restored a and inspired, in serving bag, everywhere. It's hard for you to fill out. You can just drop it in our offering box. Touching hearts and minds out, around the world. So we can pray for you and get to know you better. Amen. And there's information so you can get to know us better as well in that. All right. Thank God. Well, since we have a guest, how about we turn to each other and turn to our guests especially and just welcome them, say good morning. I know it might be a little cold today, but tomorrow's going to get warm. It's going to feel a little more like spring tomorrow. All right, just one correction to the announcements that we played earlier, possible correction. This Friday, we are planning to show episodes five and six of Chosen Season Four, but they haven't been released yet for people, to, for churches to show it. So we're waiting this week to see if that happens. If we don't have it, we will still normally, as we normally do our second Friday of the month, we meet Friday Night Fire for prayer. So we will be here, whether we're watching a movie or praying together. So I still encourage you to come out because there's nothing more powerful than prayer and nothing that changes our world more than prayer. So we will be praying or we will be watching the movie and praying at the same time. Amen. Praise the Lord about that. Was there any other thing I missed? I don't think so. So let's get into the word today. So last week we ended the part of our series on loving God with all of our heart. And we went through the book of Song of Solomon and some other chapters of different books on dealing with the heart, because that's what matters most, the heart. And last week we really focused in on the crucifixion and the resurrection, because if it wasn't for the crucifixion and the resurrection, our heart would not be made right. We would not be able to love God in return for his love for us. And his love was demonstrated to us in no greater way than what we witnessed, what we celebrated last week, his crucifixion and then his resurrection. And today we're going to go into now the next 
portion for the next few months is loving God with all of our souls, our soul. So this particular teaching today is called From Desolation to Redemption, Navigating the Depths of Suffering with Faith. So what is the soul? The soul is made up of, it comprises a person's mind, will, and emotions. The mind, will, and emotions. It is a seat of feelings, desires, and affections. Reference biblically to soul, we find it in Genesis 2-7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, spirit. And man became a living being, a soul, mind. Genesis 2-7. So we are a triune being, just like God is a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We are mind, soul, and body. Now the thing with the soul is that when we're born again, we're born of the Spirit. We're perfect in the Spirit. In Christ, in His Spirit, we are made perfect. There's no sin. There's not even any effects of sin. But we have a soul. And the soul is that which can still be damaged. And still in the process. Why are we not yet made perfect? Why do we still struggle? Why do we still have difficulties? Because we're going through a process of the renewing of the mind. As the mind is renewed, it begins to transform us. This process of regeneration, of transformation. And it doesn't happen overnight. God is addressing lies that we've believed, hurt that we have felt. These things take time. And it's really the soul that is at work. God is working through His Word to transform our soul. And so the effect of trauma is what we're really going to feature and focus in on during this teaching on loving God with all of our soul. Because that's where a lot of us are challenged in our growth. Why we might get stuck. Why we, not might, why we might not be advancing, moving forward. Why we might often be in and out, up and down. Good one day, bad the next day. Led by the Spirit, and then falling back into the works of the flesh. It's because of the damage to the soul. It's, an es it's estimated that 223 million people in this country suffer from some trauma. That's 70% of the population. PTSD, trauma can lead to conditions such as post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues. There are plenty of Christians born again that have PTSD to some form or fashion. If that wasn't the case, then Pastor Steve and I wouldn't have much to do during the week regarding counseling. <laughs> Everybody was good. They're born again and everything's just perfect and fine and dandy and we just going with the glory of God and moving forward. But no, we have a lot of problems, a lot of issues. We all have them and therefore that's why we need pastors and counselors because of it. It's not just for the people of the world. It's for the people of God. So trauma can disrupt this connection, this connection with God, this connection with one another. Love returned, learning how to love God and love one another. That's disrupted often because of trauma. We have a hard time receiving God's love and therefore giving God's love because of trauma. It leads to feelings of disconnection, emptiness, spiritual distress. Some individuals may experience a crisis of faith or struggle to find meaning and purpose in their lives after experiencing trauma. Yet, despite trauma, 
Like a lot of the songs we're being sang this morning, God is the champion. He can take us through anything. He overcame all. And if we put our trust in Him, we will overcome all. We are overcomers. God does work all things for good, but it says the part that we sometimes miss for those who trust in Him. So we've got to trust in Him, but the, it's hard to trust anyone when we've been traumatized, when our trust has been broken. But people have resilience. It's in our nature. Even people of the world have resilience to get through. So we have this, the human spirit, its capacity for healing and transformation. And through different methods like therapy, support networks, spiritual practicing, disciplines that we put in our life, self-care, Indiv individuals can work through trauma, restore their sense of self and connection, and even experience personal growth and spiritual awakening through trauma. Trauma can actually elevate us, not devastate us. Trauma can make us stronger, not weaker. But only God can do that work, and we've got to allow Him. And that's where we're challenged sometimes, allowing God to do that work. So the book, interesting enough, that we're going to go through, the main book in this part of the series, is the book of Lamentations. How many of us have heard a sermon on the book of Lamentations? No hands up. Even those who have been here for a long time, those who have been in the faith for a long time. Not much series teachings on the book of Lamentations. Maybe there's a few verses, and most of them are in chapter 3. Thank God I'm the one teaching chapter 3. I feel sorry for Pastor Steve and Dave who got 2 and 4. Not a lot to work with, but every scripture has been breathed by the Holy Spirit. Every scripture is to be used. Old Testament, New Testament, every single one can be used for our benefit, for our personal spiritual growth. So, Lamentations is going to be used. Amen? And I'm actually very excited about this book as I've been diving into it. So, the book of Lamentations serves as a beacon of light in the darkness, offering profound insights into the human experience of suffering and the enduring power of faith. What we'll see here, Lamentations, lament. A lament is a prayer expressing sorrow, pain, or confusion or a poem. It's a book of poems, a book of poems of sorrow. So this was written by the weeping prophet. Doesn't sound like we're going to have a good old joyful time over the next few weeks. Could be a lot of crying, could be a lot of weeping. But our God is a God who takes our cries, takes our weeping, and turns them into what? Rejoicing. So I believe that's what God's going to do. He's going to do some turnarounds in our life. He's going to work some stuff out of us. He's going to bring some healing in our lives. He's going to help us deal with some unforgiveness still in our life. So we can be more free. God wants this church, wants, this, wants His people to be advancing. And so we got to deal with some stuff. Amen? So Jeremiah, who wrote this book, was the prophet sent to Jerusalem to warn them about what would happen if they didn't listen to God's commands, to the prophecies, if they did not listen, if they did not take heed, what would happen? Jeremiah warned them and warned them and warned them. He did all kinds of demonstrations, crazy demonstrations, visual demonstrations that if, if people did today, we would think they're loony. They'd be put in mental institutes, institutions. But God used him greatly, and yet nobody listened, not one. Nobody received anything he had to say. He was ignored. He was rejected. He was thrown into pits, thrown into cellars. And yet, here he was now. The people didn't listen, and now judgment day had come. And Jerusalem was ransacked by their enemies. 
devastated. So bad that mothers start eating their own children. This once proud people. Remember the time of Solomon? Time of David? The nation was a nation where people would come from all over the world to come to this place to see how grand this, these people were, how amazing streets, buildings with gold and all kinds of stuff in it. A type and shadow of heaven and yet now was destroyed, devastated. Now, Jeremiah, see, sometimes what we're going through in life, what we're going to find out here in this chapter, sometimes it's our sin. Often it's not just our sin, or it might not even be our sin at all. Why we're going through stuff is because of other people's sins. We've got to deal with the damage of the people in our own household. Deal with the damage of the people in our nation. Some of the stuff coming our way. And that's what, one thing I want to warn and encourage you at the same time, because I've been getting a lot of people asking me about what do you think of the solar eclipse tomorrow? What do you think of the earthquakes? And I'll tell you what I think of. I just think of Jesus. Amen. I keep it simple. I think of Jesus. We see what Jesus said about those who are looking for a sign a perverse and wicked generation need a sign. For the wicked and perverse in the world, hopefully the signs of the times will cause them to find Jesus. But for we who already have received the sign, have Jesus in our life, we don't need to be that concerned about any of these things. The only thing we need to be concerned about is our walk with Jesus. That is it. Whether we live or die, we're with Jesus. So we have nothing to be concerned about. So I don't get caught up in this stuff. I don't repost anything that's going on. I don't talk much about Nineveh and this conspiracies, which could be true, could be not true. It doesn't matter so much to me. All that matters to me is Jesus. So if people come and they want to give a prophetic word about the signs and times, I'd say go out into the world and share that with those who are lost. But for we who are found, we only need comfort and encouragement and edification about Jesus. That's what we need. Amen? So, encourage you, don't get too caught up in this stuff. Just focus on Jesus. So as we journey through these verses of Lamentations chapter 1, I'm not going to go into to reading many of them. I'm only going to read a couple of them because I don't want to uh, cause you to cry. <laughs> I'm not one into a big sad story, but there's meaning in it all. And so we're going to focus in on the meaning of it and not just go into all the, the, uh, the sad story details. But what we'll see here is tears flowing freely. People's trusting, trusted companions turning into adversaries. How many of you have had family members, friends, and then when you're all going through something major, even like somebody, you lose somebody close to you, then suddenly family members are now turning against each other. When there's any kind of major financial loss or there's any kind of major disappointment or any kind of struggle, it's like people just, you see the worst. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when the squeeze is on, you find out where people are really at. You think the people that are for you are now against you. Church folks that seem so great all of a sudden turn away. They had their hands up. They were rejoicing, running around the church. The next thing, they're gone. What happened to them? Trauma. These things, we find out what's really in our heart. So what we see here is a profound sense of isolation and betrayal. Well, you see, they're looking for comfort and not finding it in anyone or anything. Nobody's there. Have you ever felt that before where you went through something where you feel like you were, nobody was there to really help you or console you? And those who tried just said everything that they shouldn't say? So through these lamentations, we confront the harsh reality of rejection, loneliness, and the devastating consequences of sin. Lamentations break down. There's six major themes in the book of Lamentations linked with the concept of suffering. 
And all, we can all understand that we will all suffer. Jesus made it clear, you will suffer in this life. And you will suffer for following me, he said. So if you don't want suffering, don't follow Jesus. But trust me, you will still suffer, and you'll suffer much worse for not following Jesus. We will all suffer, but the great thing is with, with Jesus and suffering, he is with you in it. You're not alone. He comforts us. He carries us. Just like the footsteps in the sand. He carries us. So we're going to deal with the suffering as a result of sin. We're going to deal with the suffering as coming from God rather than, not, rather than from men. God brings suffering in our life. He disciplines those whom he loves. Number three, the suffering could, du could direct them towards God. So suffering can be used to direct us towards God, to getting closer to God. God does not despise what a broken and contrite spirit. Often it's these times of suffering that we are broken, that we're humbled. Because God hates pride. So he's constantly at work to remove pride from our life. Number four, suffering, tears, and prayer belong together. What usually drives us to deeper prayer is suffering. Often when we're closest to Jesus is when we're suffering. In our sick bed. When we hear bad news. When all hell breaks out, what do we turn to? Jesus. Amen. Number five, prayer should always look for some ray of hope. So it's through this time of prayer that we get closer to Jesus and we get that ray of hope in the midst of our problems. And number five, their responsibility was to submit, and our responsibility is to submit to their sufferings patiently. There are seasons and times in life that suffering just seems to linger. We pray, we think it's going to go away, and it doesn't. It just continues. But we got to be patient. Sometimes suffering is not just, it's not even anything that we have done. Again, it could be the people around us, and they're not in the position yet. Or sometimes it can be us. We've got to always look within. So the main issue of suffering for the city of Jerusalem, the people of Israel, was pride. Why was it pride? Because pride doesn't listen to correction. And they were being warned and corrected by the prophet Jeremiah, but they refused to listen because of their pride. How many of us have had a major fall in our life because of pride? Hello? Nobody? A few of you? How many of us knew that we had been warned and we didn't listen? So in verse 8 of Lamentations 1, it says, Jerusalem has sinned greatly. So she has been tossed away like a filthy rag. All who once honored her now despise her, for they have seen her stripped naked and humiliated. All she can do is groan and hide her face. See, Jerusalem had sinned greatly. Because we're part of a nation, we can get the effects of the sins of our nation. And it can affect our own lives. Because we're part of a community, the sins of our community, the sins of this region. All of the earth groans and moans. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Earthquakes happening. But God is raising up a people that cannot be shaken. But the shaking will be going on around us. But we don't have to allow it, we don't have to let it affect us, even though it around, is around us. All can she do is groan and hide her face. So pride comes before the fall. So if we have a pride in our nation, we can expect fall. We can expect bad things to happen. Though we don't bring it on, we don't want it, we pray against it. But it happens because people don't listen. A lot of these signs are for warnings, warnings especially to the people of the world, but also to the people of God who are not yet right with God, who have sin in their life, who have areas that they have not really repented of. But going down to the end of Lamentations 1, 
we see a glimmer of hope that in the midst of all the destruction around them, see, it's in the times of destruction, again, that it will either devastate us or elevate us, either, either make us bitter or better. And a lot of people are very bitter in life. Bitter just breeds misery. If we have misery in our life, if there's a lot of just misfortune all the time, it's probably because inside of us there's bitterness. And bitterness will be found in the words that we speak. We speak death over our lives, over our situations. And the death brings forth destruction in our life. It's why, why our tongue cannot be tamed except for the Holy Spirit. And if we don't have this, if we're not living a spirit-led life, again, we are soul controlled. And when we're when our soul controlled, there's nothing wrong with having a soul. We all have it. And we emotions can be are given given to us by God. God is an emotional God. The Holy Spirit is described with many forms of emotions. So there's nothing wrong with being emotional. But we need to be spirit-led emotions. We need to have the spirit control the soul, not the soul control the spirit. And so the Lord wants to deal with our soul so that we can learn to be spirit-led even in the midst of trauma. And so in verse 20, it says, Lord, see my anguish. So the previous verses... People of Jerusalem were looking for everyone to help them, looking for comfort, looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking here, looking there, and they found not, nothing. So finally, in the midst of their devastation, they looked to the one and the only one that could really help them, and they looked to the Lord. How many of us found the Lord in those kind of times? It, what did it take to bring us to the Lord? Often it didn't take... It wasn't just like life was just great and good. And we said, you know what? I think it's you, God, that made life so great and good. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to accept you into my life. Do you see it when we were on the lowest of lows that we looked to God? We cried out to God and we found him. And sometimes once we now found God, we forget where we came from. And we get confused that as if all the blessings in our life are our own gain. And we lose that appreciation and we get pride in our life again. And then God has to bring us low again. So in the midst of this, we see verse 20. Lord, see my anguish. My heart is broken and my soul despairs, for I have rebelled against you. Finally, they're taking ownership. That's one of the most important steps for us to take. You got to own it. You got to own that you have rebelled, that we have rebelled, that we have sinned. And the reason things are the way they are in our life is because we have sinned. And what do we need to do? We need to repent and turn back to God. So we got to own it. We got to stop blaming everyone else, pointing fingers that they got to deal with God for themselves. But we got to deal with God for ourselves. So we take ownership of our problems. Okay, now sometimes again, like I said, our problems in our life could be the result of somebody else's sin. But it's not blaming them. We got to first look at our own self. Let God deal with them. What part do we have to play in this? Once we've done that, then that's the first step in recovery. Hello? <laughs> that's the first step. That's the most important step. Taking ownership of our sin. I am a sinner in need of grace. And then when I receive that grace, God takes care of the sin. And I don't have to declare that I'm a sinner anymore because he's taken my sin. He put it on that cross. So yet amidst the wreckage, there's a glimmer of hope, a recognition of wrongdoing and a plea for divine mercy. That is when we can now begin the journey towards healing and renewal by embracing humility, seeking forgiveness, 
First of all, forgiving ourselves, and then forgiving others, and then trusting in the Lord's providence. It's a journey. It doesn't happen overnight. So I say a key part is getting the help that we need. That's why we need counselors. That's why we need pastors. That's why we need people that can help us through inner healing. That's why we have that in place in this church. If you are in need of help, if you're struggling in the process of healing, in the process of renewal, make sure you get help. You let us know, Pastor Steve and myself, so that we can make sure that you get the help that you need. We have amazing counselors and inner healing and different people in this church to help in this process. We're a body. None of us are supposed to go through anything isolated. Each part of the body has grace to supply to the other parts. If we think we're going to get through it on our own, we won't. Even if we think we can get through it, just God and I, no. That's why Adam realized he needed a partner and God gave him Eve. We need people. We need others. We need the body of Christ. God works through his body. So if we're going to get through the traumas in our life, we need the help of other people. It's not just to bring these past hurt up into our life to revisit it. It's to get us free of it, to be delivered of it, so we don't have to revisit it again. The childhood traumas, the things that we want to forget, reality is we can't forget them until we really give them to God until we allow the waves of God's healing to pass over us, to heal us and deliver us. There is a need of deliverance. Even as believers, we need to be delivered of things that have haunted us, things in rooms that we have not yet opened. God wants to clean the house, amen? He wants a people that are completely free. See, when we hold on to things, we don't have perfect vision. When we don't have perfect vision, we see things not always clearly. What we pray might be off. What we prophesy might be off. What we teach might be off. The way we hear the word might be off. The way we hear other people might be off. When we have issues in our heart, there are darkness. There's a part of it that's darkness. So we see, we don't always see things as they really are. We're, we have deception. And so God wants to free us of de deception. In closing, and as the worship team comes forward, the devastation described in lamentation serves not only as a testament to human frailty, but also a reminder of the enduring nature of faith. Even in the darkest of times, there is a comfort to be found in the Lord's unwavering love and compassion. As we navigate the storms of life, may we draw strength from the wisdom of lamentations, steadfast in our belief that the promise of redemption emerges from desolation. God is a redeemer. God is a restorer. And there is redemption and restoration in this place right here, right now. The song champion, I was going to do the first song, then the second song came on. I said, no, that's the one we need to do. It talks about God taking us through. That he is the champion. He brought the victory. And all we, got, all we can do is learn to trust him. And he will take us through. So if you're able to, stand to your feet. And let the Lord minister to you this morning as we worship him. Amen. I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. You chose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection can never What you don't deserve and You take the broken dead And raise them to glory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you 
teaching me how to be seated. So let all the striving see. This is my victory. This is my victory. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to read. champion amen no matter what we've been through in life no matter what we're going through in life we have the authority to get through it we just got to speak over our lives speak over our beings our identity is in Christ now we are healed no matter how you feel see emotions will when we're soul controlled we live by how we feel but when we're spirit led we speak the word over how we feel so even though I might not feel whole, I declare that I'm whole. Even though I might not feel delivered, I declare that I'm delivered. That's what we got to do. We got to speak authority because our champion has done it all. Amen? In the series, Chosen, one thing that we saw in that is the story about Thomas. Now this is not in the Bible, but it has meaning in what we saw in the series. 
that the seed of doubt in Thomas came because of a, of a disappointment. Jesus seemed to not show up. His wife died. In reality, he had a wife. She didn't die. He had four children. But in the story that we see, this Hollywood version of it, which is really good, but in it brought a meaning that we can take home in our own hearts, that doubt sometimes planted in us when things don't go the way we think they will. When we lose loved ones, it can plant the seed of doubt in us. So God wants to deal with the doubt. He doesn't want us to have doubt. He wants us to have faith. And so if you have any doubt in your life, if you have any things that you don't understand, that you were disappointed by God, God wants to heal those things. So today as we close out, I encourage you to come forward for prayer. God wants to touch you. God wants to heal you. God wants to do a work in you. So Lord, we just look to you right now. We thank you, Father, that you are our champion. You are our conqueror. You conquered sin. You conquered death. You conquered trauma. And so, Lord, we need you now to conquer our hearts, conquer our souls. And you have. And all we got to do is trust you and believe in you and confess what your word says we are. And so, Lord, we thank you, God, for loving us. We thank you, God, for saving us, for healing us and delivering us. Have your way in us right now in Jesus' name. I encourage you to come forward for prayer today. If you need salvation, if you need healing, if you just want to respond to the word today, whatever your need may be, come forward for prayer. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.
have a good week this week? Is God good? All right, hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's bring it in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My announcement paper is updating, so I can't see it, so I'll just go without it. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We bless you, Lord. We just open our hearts to you. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, breathe fresh on us this morning. Renew a right spirit within us, O oh God. We just thank you, Lord God, for the outpouring of your spirit. You don't want to just refresh us. You want to pour out. We thank you, Lord God, that revival is within us. And so we declare revival in this place. We thank you, Lord, that you are drawing people from the north, south, east, and west to this place right now. We thank you, Lord, that even cars passing by are suddenly being drawn into the parking lot and drawn into this church. We thank you that your spirit is drawing people. We thank you that today is a day of salvation. That, God, you're drawing people into your kingdom today. We thank you that today is a day of healing and, and deliverance, Lord. Today is also a day of transformation, for today is the day of the Lord. And so, Lord, we just glorify you. And we honor you, Lord God. We thank you for touching each person that needs a touch from you. If you need the touch and you want to exercise your faith, just stretch your hand to the Lord and expect that the fire of heaven will come and consume you. If you need healing, receive it right now. I know two people right now that are watching probably from home, Doug and Joshua Mizrahi, two of our team on the cameras and on the media. We just declare healing. Touch them right now. Set them free, Lord God, of all that ails them right now. And anyone else that needs that touch, just receive the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for touching our president and all those in authority. We thank you, Lord God, for protecting Israel and, Lord, protecting our soldiers, protecting this nation. And, Lord God, we specifically, more than anything, pray for the church that we would just arise and shine and let the glory of the Lord be seen in us and through us. And we just bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and just greet them and say good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. All right, as we get back to our seats, we're going to acknowledge it's the first of the month, first Sunday of the month, so we're going to um, do what we always do, celebrate people's birthdays. So if your birthday is in April, stand to your feet. April birthday, stand to your feet. Celebrate John. All right. Any other April birthdays? Okay, some of you are already standing, so I don't know because you're, you know. But April birthdays, celebrate you. How about any anniversaries this month? Ron and Taylor's anniversary. Anybody else anniversaries? All right. Yes, Terry. Yes. 26. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anniversaries and birthdays. All right. One announcement, correction, possibly correction that you're going to hear in the video. And who you're going to see doing the announcements today is not Joshua. It's actually Jordan. So you might think it's Joshua, but it's Jordan. Jordan wears the glasses just to help you know the twins, if you want to know who's who. The one that wears the glasses is Jordan of the twins. He's doing the announcements this morning on the video. But um, possibly this Friday, as you know, we've been doing the Chosen series. This Friday is supposed to be episode uh, five and six, but it hasn't been released by Chosen for us to have it played yet. So we'll see if it's given to us this week. If it is, then it will be this Friday. But come Friday anyway, because normally on our second Friday of the month, we have Friday Night Fire, which is our time to pray. And prayer is what this nation needs, what we need, what the world needs. And so prayer 
is where the power is. So I encourage you, whether we have the movie night or prayer night, we're going to be praying anyway. Come out Friday night at 7 o'clock. All right. With that being said, let's go to the announcement video followed by worship. Good morning, Praise Tabernacle. We are people restored and inspired, serving everywhere. Here's what's coming up this week. Friday night is movie night here at Praise Tabernacle, and we are showing season four of The Chosen. This Friday, April 12th, we are showing episodes five through six. And this is a great opportunity to spend time with friends and family. And showing starts at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. Our website and app now has a daily dose of praise daily devotions to help study in your devotion time that goes along with our teaching throughout the series. It is a great way to stay fresh in the Word daily. It is also a great tool for discipleship with your family and friends. Altar ministry meeting will be today after second service in the multi-purpose room. For more information, see Elder Lee Boren. Praise Bowling is Saturday, April 20th at 1 p.m. at Kingpen. You can sign up on our Praise app or website, and this is a great way to have family time and raise funds for our care ministry. Everyone is encouraged to sign up and attend. For more information, see Harry Warren for details. Ministry Fair 2024 will be Sunday, April 21st after our second service. This is the time for you, our members, to see different ministries we offer for everyone in your family to get involved in the service of your calling. Ladies of Praise 4th Annual Spring Tea will be Saturday, May 4th. Registration and tickets for the tea can be done today on our Praise app or website. Here's a quick clip from our Ladies of Praise. Hello, ladies. We would all like to welcome you to this year's Ladies of Praise Spring Tea. So save the date for May 4th at 11 a.m. And our speaker this year is none other than my beautiful mother-in-law, Eldest Dolores Doty Roberts. So you cannot miss. Yes. Our tickets are, how much of our, our tickets? I, they're $10. $10. $10 tickets for ages 10 and up. So be sure to register at our Praise app. If you haven't and need some assistance for registration, please see one of us and we'll be glad to help you. We're going to be what getting all dressed up. Well, we yes. thought it'd be nice and cute, okay. ladies. We've got to wear our hats, and there will be a contest. Oh, so wow. make sure you stay tuned. I love your hat. That's yes. <laughs> yes. so cute. Don't forget, Ladies Retreat is also this October 18th through 20th. More details to come. We're tonight with Dana Isles, and Face Down will be Friday, June 7th at 7 p.m. here at Praise Tabernacle. Remember, tithes and offerings should be given cheerfully because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We have offering boxes at both main entrances of the church. Online giving options are available on our website, praisetabernacle.church/give, and also on our Praise app. You can find us on our social media pages, and we ask that you subscribe and help us spread the word by liking and sharing our content. We are now broadcasting our 10.30 a.m. Sunday service live and podcasting on the internet radio at WeGospelRadio at Live365.com and a Caribbean Christian music radio station. Pre-recorded sermons and services will be replayed at 10.30 a.m. and 5 o'clock p.m. Monday through Saturday on We Gospel Radio and at Caribbean Christian Music. If you want to connect further with your church family, grow your understanding of the word, and impact your community, join the Kingdom Expansion Group or Key Group on our Praise app. There are also many other praise groups where you can find a place to serve and grow. As a reminder, if you have planted a seed of gospel in someone this week, come light a smaller candle in the basket at the altar. And if you have led someone to the Lord, light a bigger candle as we celebrate the expansion of God's kingdom. Now let us draw near to the Lord as we worship Him and prepare our hearts for today's sermon by Pastor Dr. Joshua Kennedy entitled, From Desolation to Redemption, from the Lamentations 1 in the Love Return series. Have a blessed rest of your day and a blessed week also. Now let us worship the Lord.
And I say, come on, sing it, church. Stand undefeated. 
you to do whatever you want to. Stay right there. I will make room. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. And day and night, night and day, let us
Hallelujah. He deserves the glory. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. He does deserve the glory. Nobody deserves the glory more than him. He deserves all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a few prophetic words that came forth during worship. First, first of all, Joel. Hallelujah. Praise God, church. Hallelujah. God is doing a great thing. Amen. The Lord spoke to me on um, last Sunday and while I was in worship. And um, this is why I honor God so much and uh, bless God for the worship team who hears from God and ascend to a place that God could actually speak to his people. Uh, I thank God for doing that. Amen. Um, the Lord told me that the Nineveh revival is returning. Last Sunday, he told me that the Nineveh revival is, is returning. Now, last Sunday, I could have come up and, and released that word, but it was not time because I wanted to understand what that meant. What, what that meant, I was not too hasty in my spirit to come grab the mic, but I wanted to know, God, what are you talking about, God? What does the Nineveh revival mean, and why is it returning? And the Lord showed me that was, there was great wickedness upon the land, even many have fallen away and many have backslidden and they're living like in the state like of Nineveh when the people were doing gross wickedness in the sight of the Lord and the Lord commanded Jonah to go to Nineveh even in his state of rebellion the Lord made sure that Jonah found himself in Nineveh and the Lord said in this time I will make sure that my servants find themselves in Nineveh because I am going to save America I'm going to save the city is. The Lord said that the Nineveh revival will go around America in places and it will not be hidden. It will go around the place and people will know that there is only one God. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. Hallelujah. The God who delivers an entire nation. And the Lord said, just like in Nineveh, when the king made a decree and he said, everyone shall present themselves unto the God of Jonah. Every man, every beast in sackcloth and ashes, they shall present themselves in repentance. And the entire city repented. And the Lord said there will, there, there's coming a time, even now the time is upon us, that the cities shall come to the churches and they will repent of their sins and they will fill the churches, says the Lord. Amen, amen. Say, As I was standing over there, I just kept hearing God say there's a charge. There's a charge in this place. I said, oh God, okay, what are you talking about? He said there's a charge. And he took me to this. He said, spiritual batteries mean focus on my heart, my weakness, not my head, my strength. So when I'm reaching, I'll spend more time praying through the Psalms. Charge. Amen. Charge up. Hallelujah. Okay. Terry. And to you. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Though it was void because of sin, yet you now are his handiwork. Maybe that void has been stamped on your life. There's an emptiness, there's a longing. Void means no longer good, but you have been made righteous through Jesus Christ. And you, you are healed from the sin, the stain of sin. And you now are placed in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So do not be discouraged. The Lord God is at work. And he is making you from one degree of glory to another, from a speck of dust he created, and you are his handiwork. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Honored is to be the handiwork of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I just wanted to share one thing. You know, when we um, hear prophecies, the purpose of prophecies is to edify, to build up. That's how we should feel when we hear a prophetic word, on a, especially on a Sunday morning. We should feel built up and edified and encouraged. That's what it's all about. Now, sometimes we receive things from the Lord, but it's not always for the church. People have been asking me about the earthquakes. They've been asking me about tomorrow and the eclipse. And what's my response? Jesus. My response is Jesus. Now, there is a need for the people of this world signs. Signs are there, them, are there to point them to Jesus. So the signs, even this e eclipse that are going over cities expected to be Nineveh, Nineveh, Indiana, and Nineveh, and this Nineveh, and that Nineveh, and all these different places, and they may, and that is a sign for those in the world, especially. For us, like the word Joel gave, it's a sign of revival that's going to take place. But mainly these signs are for the world to see Jesus. But we who already have Jesus don't need a sign. Amen. Jesus even told them when they came coming to him, show me a sign. He said, you perverse, wicked generation. I already gave you the sign. And the main sign that you need to know that in three days I will be like Jonah was in the whale. The sign that we all need already happened. Jesus came out of the grave and he was resurrected. And we have received him. Therefore, we don't need any more signs. But the world needs signs. And so sometimes what the Lord is showing us is for us to proclaim to the world. Not really the church, it's for the world. Some of us are seeing things and it's for the world. So go and tell the world. But we here on Sunday morning, we need to be built up and edified and encouraged so that we can get stronger in Jesus. Amen. So what are my concerns about the end of the world and about all these things? All I know is Jesus, and that's all I need. His timing and all that. My focus is this. He called us to the ministry of reconciliation. And he said he's coming back for a pure and spotless bride. My focus is reconciling people to God and reconciling man to man. My, my role is to see the church purified. All that other stuff, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope our hearts are prepared for communion. Those who have been asked to give out the communion elements, come forward. Come forward and receive your elements, then go back to your seat, and then we will pray, go over the scriptures together.
print. Hallelujah. As we go through these scriptures, just remember the warnings before you take communion to always check, check our heart, check our relationship with the Lord. Where is it at? If we have any ought with our brother, before we take communion, we're to get right with one another because there's consequences if we don't. God is a holy God. And so we need to take communion in a holy manner. But a God is also a God of mercy. And so the moment we ask for forgiveness, we receive it just like that. The moment we forgive our brother and sister, we receive his forgiveness. So let's just take a second just to examine our heart. All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord... What I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us now partake together. I'm going to ask the children and youth to come forward real quick. So you can run up here. Run up here real quick so we can get you in your classes after you get prayed over. Amen. Let's stretch our hands for these beautiful, precious ones. So many of them we were blessed by this past Last Sunday, last Friday, with the Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday, they did such awesome skits and songs and were just so amazing, such anointed, gifted young people. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for them. We thank you, Lord God, that there is no junior Holy Spirit, that they have the same Holy Spirit that all of us have. They are just as capable as any of us to preach your word, to prophesy, to do the works of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, for keeping them and protecting them, using them mightily, Lord God in their schools, in their homes. We thank you that they are obedient children. They obey their parents. We thank that they honor you in every way in school, Lord God. They do their schoolwork well. They are excelling in everything, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord, that you keep them from all evil, from all things that would harm them. And now, Lord, as they go into their classrooms, we just thank you for anointing the teachers, anointing the lessons, and that they will continue to be transformed into your image. We just bless you and bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Dismissed. Y'all ready for the word? Hallelujah. Place is charged up. Our batteries are full. That means we shouldn't be falling asleep. Shouldn't be yawning. 
We should be ready and excited for what God is already doing and what he's going to continue to do as the word goes forth. Hallelujah. Well, last week we finished the uh, part of the Love Return series dealing with love God with all of our what? Heart. And the key was last week because we wouldn't be able to have our heart right with God and therefore able to return love back to God if it wasn't for the crucifixion and resurrection. Because of the crucifixion and resurrection, our sins have been nailed to the cross. Because Jesus resurrected, we have now power over sin. And because of that, we can now have a relationship with God. The veil has been torn in two. We can have a heart-to-heart -heart connection with God. He is no longer just the man upstairs. He's no longer just the great pie in the sky. He's the God in our heart. He's the God that is with us, that's in us, that is here right now. His resurrection power is here. And so now we're going to go into something that's going to get deep. Anybody like to go deep? Anybody like to go deep into the waters? Scuba diving? Scuba diving in Turkey? <laughs> so we're going to do some scuba diving over the next few months. And we're going to deal with the soul. The soul. And so this is going to be fun. I'm actually very excited about it. At first I was like, I don't know, because we're going into some deep waters that can get a little scary. I know how to swim, though, so I'm good. But those don't know how to swim, it might get a little scary. So what this one's titled, this first lesson of dealing with the soul, loving God with all of our what soul, is from desolation to redemption, navigating the depths of suffering with faith. We're going to learn how to deal with suffering. So first of all, let's tackle a little, a little bit more about the soul. So what is the soul? The soul is, it comprises a person's mind, will, and emotions. It's a seat of feelings, desires, and affections. God gave us a soul. We'll see that right here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed, ground, body, we became a body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, his spirit, his pneuma, was breathed into us, and man became a living being, or that word is soul. So we are a triune being. Body, spirit, soul. God is a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. So we have a soul. And all of our lives, before we had Holy Spirit, we were soul controlled. Our feelings dictated what we did. And some of us still are soul controlled. We've been regen regenerated, we've received the Spirit, but we're still allowing the soul to take control. We're not Spirit led, we're soul controlled. So we're going to deal with the soul. What happens to the soul, even though we are regenerated and we've received the Holy Spirit, so in the Spirit we have been made perfect. In the Spirit there is no sin. In the Spirit we are who the Bible says we are. We are who Christ says we are. Who we are, we now are in Christ, in the Spirit. But the problem is our soul likes to take control. That's why we've been given the Spirit to put our flesh under. But that's a, something we have to choose to do. We still have choice. We can choose each day whom we're going to serve. If we serve the Lord, we are Spirit-led. If we serve the soul, our, fl our flesh, the enemy is really involved in what we do. So the deal with the soul... And the process that we're in, see, we receive the Holy Spirit, receive salvation. We're born again. 
But now we're in this process, as, as Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, a renewing of the mind, of being transformed, of learning what the acceptable and perfect and, and right way or order of the Lord is. So we're in this process, and it takes time. But the reason why some of us have a hard time in changing and why we get stuck is because of the soul. We have damaged souls. We have traumas from our past that have not yet been healed. And so the way we see God and the way we see others is not full, it's not complete. We're not looking through the vision of 2020 vision. We're seeing things miscued. We're having a, a form of God Godliness, but denying the power of, there is deception still in the mix. Things aren't pure. I've received, my wife and I, we've received prophecies that we knew came from a place of somebody with a damaged soul. I've heard messages preached from damaged soul messages. Had some God in it, but some a man in it. And I want to give things that are pure. I want to release things that are pure. I want to represent God in all of who He is. I don't want to mislead people in any kind of way. So i got to make sure that my soul is in order. It's estimated that over 223 million people in our country suffer from trauma. That's 70% of the population. Now, over 70% of people say they believe in Jesus in our country. So that's saying that a lot of people that say they're Christians are still soul-controlled. Because that's what trauma will do. Trauma can lead to conditions such as post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, which brings forth depression, the fruits of depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues. Do you think those things are not going on in the church? If they, were, if they weren't, then Pastor Steve and I don't have much to do throughout the week. My wife wouldn't have to be a counselor. And many of the rest of you, there's a lot of you that are in here that are counselors. The reason why we have so many of us is because there's a lot of people still stuck, still hurting, still broken because of trauma. Trauma can disrupt the connection. The connection with what? This connection with God and with one another. Our job, as the Bible says, our command is what? To love God and love one another. But the disruption is in that is trauma. When trauma has happened, mistrust forms. This leads to feelings of disconnection, emptiness, or spiritual distress. Some individuals may experience a crisis of faith or struggle to find meaning and purpose in their lives after experiencing trauma. The average Christian that I've ever, when I've asked this question before, how many of you know your purpose? How many of you know your call? Very few hands go up. Why don't we know our calling and our purpose? Because we're not hearing from the Lord. God is a God who's in our life, and He guides us and leads us. If He's leading our life, we should know where we're going. If He leads our life, we should know our purpose. We should understand our meaning. We should know our identity. But the reason we don't is because we're not hearing Him clearly because of these fractures in our soul. But the good news is, no matter how fractured we are, God is able to heal us. God is, God is able to fix us. No matter how deep it goes, I've talked this about, some of it goes into our womb. In the womb we were traumatized by whatever our mother was going through. Some of our trauma we were born into from generations of trauma pass on to us, spoken over us, spoken in us. One generation after another, we're born into it. So it goes generational. Yet God is able 
to go back into the past. He's able to go beyond today and go back into yesterday, go back thousands of generations. He's a time tra traveler. And go back in time and heal the mess. He can fix those things. So God is about to do some fixing in this place. Fixing inside of our hearts. Despite the profound damaging impact trauma can have, many believe in the resilience of the human spirit. Really? The Holy Spirit. And its capacity for healing and transformation. Through therapy, support networks, spiritual practices, and self-care, individuals can work through trauma, restore their sense of self and connection, and even experience personal growth and spiritual awakening. God can work all things for good. He is able. He's able to take our misery and make it into what? A ministry. Come on. You're supposed to go with me. Come on. You've heard that before. He turns our misery into ministry. He turns our trauma into? Treasure. Yeah, treasure. I didn't know that one, so I'm waiting for you guys. <laughs> the only rhyme that, to me that went with trauma was turn my trauma into Obama. No. <laughs> It rhymed. That was the only rhyme that came, went with it. But. So that won't work, though. But it was funny. Anyway, sometimes laughing heals. Actually, laughing is one of the biggest keys of healing. So I had to give you a little something there. But all we know is the Lord turns anything around if we let him. But will we let him? Will we go back there? Will we let him in? God does not want us to revisit our trauma, but he does want to deliver us from it. And it takes us having to acknowledge it. So what are we, where are we going to go into? What's the book that we're going to go into to take us on this path? It's a book that I have never taught before from. I've maybe used a couple of scriptures, especially Lamentations chapter 3. But I haven't really taught this book from, and I looked it up, and I couldn't find anyone else who has either. But all Scripture has been given to us for inspiration. Amen. All of it has been given for correction and for teaching. So I will take the old and the new and everything in between and teach the Word of God. So we're going into the book of Lamentations. Some of you didn't even know that's in the Bible. But the book of Lamentations serves as a beacon of light in the darkness. It offers profound insights into the human experience of suffering and the enduring power of faith. Lamentations is short for what? Lament. A lament is a prayer or poem expressing sorrow, pain, or confusion. So who's the author of, of Lamentations? Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. So this is a book of weeping. It's a book of tears. It's a book of his prayers or poems of him crying. Why was he so sad? Why was he so hurt? Because he had been preaching and preaching and preaching to the people of Jerusalem, to the people of Israel. He had been warning them that they don't stop doing what they're doing, Judgment day would come. And he preached and he preached. And people didn't listen. Not one convert. Not one person listened. Instead, and he went all out. He didn't just preach. He demonstrated. He tore his clothes off. He did all kinds of things that people would think he should be put in the madhouse. Old Testament prophet. Wild. No fear, no worry about what people thought. Wild like my hair. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Crazy guy. And nobody heard or received anything he had to say. Rejected, thrown into a cistern. 
And yet, here he is. Now judgment day came. Jerusalem got ransacked by its enemies. Torn down, desolated. Everything dark. Things getting so bad, no food left. Mothers resorting to cooking their own children. Judgment came hard. So as we journey through the verses of Lamentations 1, we're confronted with the raw agony of a city laid waste by affliction. Tears flow freely and trusted companions turn into adversaries. How many of you have had people in your life close to you, family members, that when you go through a loss as a family, they all turn against one another? Friends, other Christians, See, when the squeeze is on, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, you really find out where people are at when they're going through. And so what they were experiencing was those who seemed to be for them were now against them. This echoes the profound sense of isolation and betrayal that often accompanies suffering. People will be for us and with us when all is well, but when we're suffering... It's hard to find them. Calling them, text them, no response. Go over to their home, knock on the door, nobody answers. Through these lamentations, we confront the harsh reality of rejection, loneliness, and the devastating consequences of sin. The breakdown of lamentations in six parts, all to deal with suffering. Number one, Suffering as a result of sin. Now, suffering as a result of sin can be our own sin, but because we live in a fallen world, it's also the sin of those around us, the sin of our family, the sin of our nation. All the earth is shaking and groaning, earthquakes, hurricanes. These things are the result of sin. The earth shakes. The earth is not right. It's not as it was in the days of Adam and Eve before sin when everything was perfect. It's not those days. Because of the fall, the world has fallen. And therefore, these things happen. So we have to suffer the consequences of the sins of the world because we're still in a fallen world. But it's a world that's also being restored. Their suffering was seen as coming from God rather than from men. God allows it. God lifts his hands. If we won't take heed to his warnings, he'll lift his hands. Why would he do that? Because our God loves us. Whom he loves, he corrects. How he corrects us, just like a parent would lift their hand to spank, God lifts his hand and allows the enemy to do what he does. Their suffering could direct them towards God, though that's the goal. God's discipline is always for our good, for us to learn lessons and return to Him. It's not to reject us. It's for us to return back to Him, to have an intimate relationship. Well, I'm a very, you know, I'm a churchgoer, but some of us are very religious, and our relationship does not go very deep. God's not after our religion. He's not after our lifted hands. He's not after our songs. He's after our heart. He knows where our heart is at. <laughs> Suffering, tears, and prayer belong together. When are we usually the closest to the Lord? When we suffer the most. Our suffering can either make us better or what? Bitter but it's an opportunity to get better, to get closer. When we don't know what to do, when we don't know who to look to, when we don't have any answers, we look to the one who does. Prayer should always look for some ray of hope. So there's always a ray of hope when we turn to God. God will always show us hope. There's always a way through. But does not mean that our suffering will just end the moment we look back to God. It may last for a while. Job's suffering lasted for a while. 
some of our suffering may last for a while. The lessons, maybe we think we learned them, but we might not have learned them yet. And again, it's also the consequences of the people around us. It's also, there's a spiritual battle going on. Sometimes whom the angels that God sends to deliver us a message, to bring things forth, haven't yet arrived because of the battle going on. There's things that we don't understand that we don't know. See, the key in all this is going to be learning to trust Jesus even when we don't understand the why. Just choosing to trust him anyway. Whom else can we trust when it comes down to it? When we go through certain things, we find that there's people that we thought we could trust, we can't trust. But the one person that we got to trust, no matter what, is God. We can't put God and, and put him as, our, as our, what our earthly father, earthly mother, husband, wife, whomever has disappointed. We can't put them in the same category. God's above all. He is perfect. He is always there no matter what. And so we got to learn to trust him no matter what. So I'm not going to go into every scripture in Lamentations because we don't have enough tissue to pass around. I'm not really too much into Lifetime. I don't watch Lifetime shows. But we're still going to go there. We're going to touch on things. Some things got to go deeper. Some of you, things are going to open up in your heart that we need, you need help. Amen. See, God works through the body. He doesn't just help you, he, Him and yourself. He works through others. And that takes letting go of pride to admit our shortcomings, to admit where we fall, you know, where we need help in. But it's part of getting healing is humility. And so we have inner healing in place. We have counseling services in place. We have everything needed in this place to get the help that you need. Amen? But the key to getting the help each of us need is dealing with pride. The problem with what happened in Israel, in Jerusalem, was their pride. Pride comes before the fall. If there's, always, if there's ever a fall, it's always because there was pride. If we fall, it's because of our pride. That's why there's pride. God exalts the humble, gives grace to the humble, but he actually says he detests pride. None of us would like to admit that our pride, God detests it. Have you ever, any, any, have anybody here have anything that detests them? That really gets under your skin? And again, we shouldn't have anything under our skin. Because <laughs> we wouldn't be free of anything and everything. But there's things that detest us. You know, a child being molested detests me. A woman being raped detests me. There's certain things that detest us, the, the level of sin and, and what people can do because of it, how evil people can be because of sin detests me. But our pride detests God. So he will allow us to fall to deal with it. He loves us that much. He will allow shame and, humili and humiliation to come into our life because of his love for us. So here in verse 8, it says, Jerusalem has sinned greatly. Now before that, they were talking about their ancestors and what the ancestors had done. The people were talking about, you know, all these things isn't fair because it's, we're taking the blame of what everyone else has done. Why am I taking the blame? But here, finally in verse 8, the city, the people of the city begin to acknowledge of their own sin. They stop blaming everyone else. Jerusalem has sinned greatly, so she has been tossed away like a filthy rag. All who once honored her now despise her, for they have seen her stripped naked and humiliated. All she can do is groan and hide her face. So God will do whatever it takes to get us on our face, to get us down to our knees because of his great love for us. We love to talk about the love of God that is merciful, but there's the love of God that judges. God is a judge. 
He's a merciful judge, but he does discipline us. He does discipline us, and it hurts. And he wants his church right because we reflect him. We are his body. We represent him. And he wants us to represent him right. So he's dealing with us. Judgment begins where? First in the? So we like to focus on, and we give the devil so much credit, and we focus so much on what's going on out in the world, who's doing what. We, we take too much time to focus on what the devil's doing. But what is God doing? God is dealing with his church. That's why I know I, some of you think Jesus is coming back real soon. I don't see a pure and spotless bride. I don't see the world restored. I don't know about you, but I don't think he's coming back too soon. I'll just go along with what it says in the word. You never know when it's going to be. So it could be soon. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but all I know is, what am I to do? He's called me to do the work of the Lord. He's called me to, to, to reach the lost, destroy the works of the enemy. That's my focus. All that other stuff, I don't know and I'm not concerned about. What I'm concerned about is what is Jesus doing here and now. And so with what he's doing in us, he's trying to purify us. We're going through the fire so he can bring us out like gold. Why can't, you know, we go through a week without being tested, without being tried. Why can't it just be easier? Because we're not like gold yet. We're not yet made perfect. So it's not going to be. So in this age, don't think it's going to be. Jesus promised you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer for my cause, for my case. You're going to suffer. We're all going to suffer. So just get used to it. In this life, there's suffering. In the age to come, suffering's done away with. He will wipe our tears. The lion and the lamb will sit together. There'll be no more racism. There'll be no more male over female, female over male. There'll no be none of that. All these things that we struggle with will be gone. But for this life, we're going to suffer. But there's always a glimmer of hope. Verse 20 says this, Lord, see my anguish. My heart is broken and my soul despairs, for I have rebelled against you. He, the people of Jerusalem began to take ownership of what they had done. The first step is what? Acknowledging what we have done. That is the first to get help, to get healing, to get right with God, to get right with one another. We must first acknowledge what we've done. We have to deal with it. We have to address it. We can't ignore it. There cannot be a hidden room, a dark corner. Jesus wants to bring all things to the light. He wants us to be filled with his light. He wants people to see nothing but him when they see us. No dark thing left unturned. He's coming after. He's going after all of us. Until he has all of us, we're going to go through suffering. Suffering after suffering. Discipline after discipline. I know this isn't a feel-good message, but it's truth. The truth sets us free. If we want to get free, this is what we got to hear. I want to be free. I don't know about you. If I was a slave, if we were still back in slavery days, in some places of the world there's still slavery going on. If I was a slave, I would want to run for the I would want to run up and get out of there. Somebody said there was a way out, I'd get out. So it's time to get out. It's time to move out of our past. It's time to let the traumas be healed. Yes, it might not happen just like that. And God is patient and God is gracious. And we need to be gracious with one another. Some of these things go very deep. 
and they hurt greatly. But God wants to heal. He wants to reach. Some of us have these questions. We have loved, lost ones that we just don't get. We don't understand. When somebody young is taken, we don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to us. Even the disciples struggled with it. They couldn't get when Jesus kept telling them he's going to die. They couldn't get it. He's only 30 years old. Or at that time, 33. A young man. He's telling them he's going. That can't be God's will. A lot of things don't make any sense in our understanding. Another story from Chosen. This was the Thomas story. So in the Chosen season four, if you watched it, episode four, three, Thomas, they added some story to make it a little more and bring some meaning because there's a lot of things we don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us all the details. We get what we need to know. But in the, in the movie, in the series, there's a little added some stuff, but it all has packed with purpose and meaning in it. So Thomas, doubting Thomas, it shows why he doubted. First of all, his wife was taken from him. She died. She died, and he couldn't understand why Jesus didn't heal. So that doubt formed. But if you really listen and watch the reason behind all of it, the why in this one I got... So why would God allow that, even though this story is not in the Bible? Why would God allow that? Well, because the person who killed Thomas's wife was the head of that district. And because he now was punished for what took place, he was removed from his office and he was the one hindering the work of the Christians. And the one who had opened his heart to God took his place and the work of the Lord continued because of the death of Thomas's. But if you didn't see that, you wouldn't know that, and it wouldn't make sense. There's so, God's ways are higher than our ways. There's so a lot of things we'll never understand in this life because we just can't get it. Because our mind, our heart, we're just, it's too small compared to God. Some things just happen because they happen, because it's a fallen world. And we're wrestling with God, and we're wrestling with God, but we need to just let God win. Sometimes how we let God win is, God, I don't know and I can't understand, but yet I will trust you. But yet I will trust you. So the devastation described in Lamentation serves not only as a testament to human frailty, but also a reminder of the enduring nature of faith, that despite our questions, despite the whys, we keep in our faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. That also means the things that we don't understand. Yet I have faith. Yet I trust you, Lord. Even in the darkest of times, there's a comfort to be found in the Lord's unwavering love and compassion. His love never ends. The compassion is always there for us. As we navigate the storms of life, the tests and trials, the questions, may we draw strength from the wisdom of lamentations, steadfast in our belief that the promise of redemption emerges from desolation. As the worship team comes up, as the worship team comes up, I'd like you to do something a little different for the special. Add number one, first song, and number two, do a medley. Do one and two if you can. Oh, you are. Oh, I thought that was waving off. All right, we have a song about trust. Hallelujah. All the songs will be good. The song is about trust. Go ahead. Bless the Lord. Let's get a mic. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Somebody said, why is she screaming? You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. You don't know the cost. We don't know the cost for the apostle there, but we all know Jesus. 
and he's worthy. From the rising of the sun until the going down of sin, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to honor you right now. Glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah, Lord, I praise your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wanna set up a Kosaya? Hallelujah. You might say, why is she screaming? It's been a year since I have been able to sing. A year. We got people sitting here that's gifted and talented in so many things. Can you imagine if for a year you have not been able to operate in the gift? We have people here who are counselors, therapists, nurses. Can you imagine if you had not been able to go to work? No money, no paycheck. That's the way I feel today. Jesus honored me by restoring my voice, so I honor him for restoration. Glory to God. Apostle, Pastor Steve, I thank you. Pastor Roger, wherever you are, for giving me an opportunity to just bless our Father. Hallelujah. And to these ladies and musicians, I thank you for, for just joining me. The stand. I just want to sit this on the stand. Praise the Lord. Thank you for. I need a stand. Yes. I thank you all for giving me my little moment to bless the Lord. And I, I, I'm not going to apologize. He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my poor man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood, glory to God. And what he did for me on Calvary's more than enough. Oh, I'm trusting God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never
never seen the righteous forsaken. Hallelujah. I never seen the righteous forsaken or see begging bread. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God in this place. Hallelujah. Glory. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord. Uh, rehearsals. So this was faith today, and Hallelujah. I give God all the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If you know the Lord's going to take you through, just lift your hands to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the God that takes us through. You brought us to this place, to this point, and you're going to take us all the way through. What you've begun in us, you are faithful to complete. We thank you for your workmanship. We thank you that you are well able to hurt er, I mean, heal every hurt. Deliver us of every oppression. We just surrender all things to you right now. Have your way in us. Do what only you can do. We give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. If you never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day. Come forward to the altar. If you need further prayer of healing, you got some stuff to deal with, some soul things that you want to surrender to God, come forward and receive prayer today. God bless you and have a wonderful week. In Jesus' name. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the service, and you want to learn more about the ministry, head over to the website at praisetabernacle.church where you can learn about all the ministries Praise has to offer. Find devotional content, weekly newsletters from the pastors, and much more. We hope to see you soon right here at Praise Tabernacle because we are people restored and inspired serving everywhere.